Appendix A, Dicking Around in Adventure Mode, with Vox Nihili and You're Getting Fatter. I just re-downloaded Dwarf Fortress, loaded up the latest head shoot save, hit Abandoned on the Fort, and went through the history. It is crazy. Literally everything is covered. You can see the strengths on both sides for every siege, who killed who, etc. Anyone interested in their dwarves' life could find them in the creatures section of the Legends mode by searching their name. The amount of information about the fort is staggering. The history of the settlement itself is dozens of pages, though many are just so-and-so made a legendary engraving named X. The list of 25 artifacts is ridiculous. Uncle Jam posted... If any time passes between Abandon and getting there, they'll have left. After a while, they'll find another town and resettle there. You can find out the name of the town using legends. I just created an adventurer in the nearest sieve and went down there. Near the abandoned settlement, I saw an equal symbol and headed over. Every single dwarf is there, including Holistic Detective wearing her armor. Pictures coming soon. We'll hit up the settlement itself next. Edit. I tried to attack Holistic Detective and was bashed to death by her backpack. Further pictures of my adventures with the Dwarves of Headshoots and the abandoned fortress. Asob Asteshulurit, Axe Dwarf, says, You look like a mighty warrior indeed. Holistic Detective says... I am a soldier. I have taken down ten skeletal mountain goats while stalking head shoots. Here's me attempting to take out a different champion. You miss the Deathsmith. The Deathsmith counterstrikes. They bash you in the lower arm with his hammer. It is mangled. You lose hold of the steel short sword. The flying steel boat strikes you in the right lower arm. It is badly pierced. Your right elbow has been badly sprained. You give in to the pain. The Deathsmith charges at you. You're surprised by the ferocity of of their attack. The Deathsmith bashes you in the upper body with his steel warhammer. It collapses into a lump of gore. You are propelled away by the force of the blow. You slam into an obstacle. You have been struck down. You are deceased. I create a human adventure in the nearest human sieve, which traded and occasionally warred with headshoots. Apparently the trading was so good that most of the townspeople are merchants, seen as the people in orange and red in this picture. Old trade goods litter the streets. I steal some armor and weapons for my exploration into headshoots proper. The townspeople don't take too well to having their piles of wealth rifled through. Guess I'll try a different approach. This can only go well. (laughs) I create a female elf. After some time running over from the elf land, I'm still trying to find the group. I manage to sneak up on some nobody armorsmith and strangle him to death with my bow, and then... talking to the dwarf deathsmith Sorellin. Sorellin stands before you. I am Sorellan Shipgills, the escorted saber. Death of Ilral Crystal Cavern, whose potency I question after his ineffective thrusts. Prepare to die. Your head flies off in a bloody arc. You have been struck down. Yeah, these guys are much... Tougher than I'm used to. I'm going to see if they resettle somewhere or if they just wander forever. Edit. They seem to splinter into smaller and smaller groups. They spread further out from head shoots, but have no real direction. Talking to them can be rather depressing. Here's a conversation with one child. Tell me about your family. Spoon Boy, the the funsmith, says, My mother was named Pimp Must Ring Pact. In the late summer of 112, Pimp Must was struck down by the spirit of fire Slock Wraithrin in head shoots. Uh, tell me about your family? I had an older sister named Son of Alias Gladness Handles. 
in the midsummer of 112, son of Aelius died in the heat in head shoots. He tells a tale of a mother and father who met and were married in head shoots. He's the middle child, with a younger and older sister. All of his family was massacred years ago by the demons, and now he wanders the wilderness in search of a new home. The fortress is littered with thousands upon thousands of items and bones. Finding a real entrance is impossible. Finding water channels and tombs, not so much. Only one tomb still had bones in it, but the mighty animals kept nearby were long dead in their cages. Weapons smeared with goblin, dwarf, kobold, and camel blood can be found amidst the wreckage. Hundreds of coins, both solitary and in small piles, can be found. Magma from magnificent projects has cooled and solidified into obsidian walls, blocking some doors. I find and pull a few levers. Nothing happened. There is no life here, animal, sentient, nor undead. I find the creek, massively excavated and with channels dug into it. Hoping to find an underwater entrance, I jump in, knowing that I have only normal level swimming ability. The current is too much, however, and I drown. One corpse amongst hundreds, just another piece of wreckage in a cursed land. Fox Nihilai previously said that there was no life here, animal sentient nor undead. Well, turns out I was wrong. Something else has come to live in head shoots. The zombie Sasquatch charges at you, punches you in the upper body with his left hand. It is bruised. The zombie Sasquatch collides with you. You're knocked over. The zombie Sasquatch bites you in the head. It is torn. Your left eye has been torn out. The zombie Sasquatch latches on firmly. You struggle in vain against the grip of the zombie Sasquatch. Bonus post by You're Getting Fatter. I've reached the area where the fabled head shoots fortress is supposed to be. In the ground, I find a series of channels. I run atop the nearest hill and confirm my suspicions. The channels seem to be arranged in the shape of some strange symbols that I do not recognize. Perhaps a greeting from its long-lost inhabitants? The posts continue. I hope you guys don't mind the adventure picks and such between updates. I really had a lot of fun with this site and decided to give it another visit. What follows is the final journey of Caddest Half Merchant Passion, Human Female. After interviewing many of the Headshoot survivors and visiting the site of the Lost Fortress several times, she decided to make one last attempt to find her way down to the spectacular spectacular wealth that surely waited in its depths. She'd already lost one eye to the undead that still haunt the site, and had her foot nearly incinerated by magma after opening the wrong door. But this time, against all odds, she made it inside. The tales of glorious wealth were true. Pieces of adamantine in various stages of work were found, along with aluminum and steel baubles of varying value. On her way to look for even deeper passages, however, she found that the undead do not merely lurk on the surface of the once great fortress. Undead large rats and troglodytes, a mere nuisance to an accomplished pike woman like herself, perhaps, but a troubling encounter in a fort whose halls seemed entirely abandoned moments ago. A zombie trawl, too. Curious. Curious. As she approaches stairs leading into the depths, a multitude of undead suddenly spew forth. These are not the zombies of before, but speedy, skeletal creatures, a troll and many, many troglodytes. She destroys the troll easy, but now a skeletal giant bat is upon her, and more troglodytes stream forth. You stand up. The giant skeletal bat bites you in the right lower leg. It's badly ripped. Your right knee has been broken. The bat latches on firmly. You become enraged. You fall over. The bat tears her knee apart, enraging her. She shatters it immediately with her pike, but is now lying on the floor, surrounded by skeletal monsters. It's pretty difficult to attack when seven different creatures are holding your arms. The yellow text here means the joint is locked in place and about to be broken. 
Skeletal arms grasp and tear, joints snap, blood is spilled. Even now, our heroine destroys and dismembers several more attackers. But it is too late. Soon, mercifully, she passes out from exhaustion. The adamantine gauntlet, fire em skull totem, and two artifacts that she found will not, in fact, be recovered. In this alternate timeline, the depths and darkness have reclaimed headshoots in a way that none could have foreseen. Take heed, overseers, for headshoots is the gateway that holds the evil in the depths. Do not allow her to fall. <laughs>